Welcome YouTubers to Blueberry Crafty. Now my name's Lucia and I am showing you how to make these lovely three layered, triple layered facet box. Okay, now if you have a look inside, there's heaps of rooms on the inside, plenty for stuff in here. You can put whatever you want, heaps of rooms, very, very large, three layered, very tall. Okay, the idea came to me um, from um, Poodle's Paper Crop. She makes a one layered, um, one layered facet box and Persephone's Angel makes a double layered facet box. They've got those on their YouTube channels. Now, I thought if you could make two layered, why not make three layered? So this is my design. Um, I extended from their concept and I made it into a three layered facet box. I'm going to show you how today. Okay, let's start off. Okay, first of all, you need a sheet of paper starting off at 10 and 1 8 of an inch by 12 inches that will be 30.5 centimeters by 25.7 centimeters excuse my voice i'm losing my voice so we start off with the long side at the top and we start scoring at three quarter of an inch three quarter of an inch three inches five and one quarter seven and a half and last nine and three quarter of an inch okay then we rotate 90 degrees to the short end side at the top okay oh sorry i forgot to give you in centimeters okay in centimeters that will be 1.9 centimeter 7.6 13.3 19 centimeters and 24.7 Okay, now then we change it to this side. We are going to now score um, from the top to just the second score line. If you can see that second score line at one and one eighth of an inch to just to the second score line. Yep, one and one eighth, three and three eighth of an inch, five and five eighth of an inch. Seven and seven eighth of an inch. Seven and seven eighth of an inch. Yep. Now you flip it 180 degrees and we're gonna do the same thing, okay? So one at one and one eighth of an inch, three and three eighth of an inch, five and five eighth of an inch, seven and seven eighth of an inch okay and in centimeters that will be at 2.8 centimeters 8.6 centimeters 14.3 centimeters and 20 centimeters okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna score diagonally i'm gonna show you the template of how it will look okay so this is the template of how we need to score the diagonal lines okay so basically from the first score line you need to go to the second score line first score line meets up with second score line then you move one next to the next one the same deal keep going like that okay so usually what i see um on the other channels what they usually do is they get out a ruler and they put something soft underneath and then what they'll do is they'll line it up for example the first one will go to the second score line so they'll line it up and they'll score it now I've decided to do a different way so I have put a little bit of a washi tape from the top of my scoring board down to the bottom of my scoring board and that just gives me a reference guide okay I'll show you how I do that so what you want to do is you want to fold up you want to fold up your score lines okay the second score line at the from the three quarter of an inch and the first score line from the bottom okay so we use this as a reference guide now like we said before it doesn't matter at the bottom or at the top it's still the same so the first score line from the one and one eighth of an inch needs to go to the second score line so what i usually do is I keep these two flaps closed and I use the end of the score line as a reference. The top one I lined it up to the top and the second score line I lined it where the washi tape ends if you can see here. Once I've got them aligned perfectly as I 
would like them to be then what I do is I lift up the score line I lift oh, sorry I lift up the flaps and I start at that score line to find where the line is and just score it down and that will give me a perfect lineup okay and then you just move one down from there make sure they're perfectly aligned perfect 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 yep and score it will go perfectly second one go down here and you move it down just as you would the template now that template will be on my blog um, there will be a link to my blog at the bottom below with the description down below just click on the button and you'll find the description for that okay so we score that now the final one the final score line will meet up with the edge the edge over here so we'll continue on to the edge because the edge of course it will finish on the next one but you can see the pattern there so from there you go score down and from there from there score down to the middle okay yep as you would with this score line that one there to that there. Okay, so then you would do with the uh, other side of the horizontal and go along until it looks like pretty much like that. Score lines, okay. Now once you have that, it will look something or rather like this. Just ignore my little poo-poo there, okay. So it will look like something like that crisscrossing and now I will show you how to cut it out the template. We need to do some cutting now. Um, to do the cutting, what you need to do is, I've got a template here. So basically this is what we need to keep out, uh, cut out. Now the one quarter of an inch up there. So just note the one and one eighth of an inch up there and one and one eighth down here. So starting at the one and eight, one eighth at the bottom, you need to cut up here cut up that corner then you need to cut down cut over here okay so you need to cut that piece off yep you need to cut off this di uh, diamond piece as well cut this up yep okay and then on the top here we need to cut out this rectangle so cut in horizontal here. Remember, don't cut out this bottom piece like you would down at this end here. Okay, we need that piece. Now we cut this one down, the flaps down that way. Yep. Okay, so that's pretty much what you need to cut out. Then now you need to cut out all, all the flaps down here so you need to cut up to the score line the flaps down here all of those and on the top as well you need to cut the flaps on the top also and you leave the first flap as it is then you need to cut in half these this flap here the second flap panel second panel flap and you need to cut off this whole one at the scoring line here so all of that panel is gone and then the second half on that side now to make things a lot quicker I've already added adhesive to my um, my sample so pretty much once you've done that you need to burnish fold and burnish all your score lines all your diagonal score lines um, in regards to the middle score line the horizontal score line you don't really need to do that they actually shape themselves so I, I just leave it I don't score them I don't score them I just leave them as they are and then you need to put glue along that special tab up there glue whatever choice of adhesive you like and in this rectangle okay so first you need those glue so we line them up you'd line them up like so I need to make this hurry up 
Yep, line it up as such. Line that one up as well. Need to make sure it's really stuck on. Good. Okay. And then you need to line these two up and line it up, line it up. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell. bell. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas in July. Sorry, the new Stampin' Up! catalog Christmas is coming, so I've got Christmas on my mind now. So that's what we have at the moment. Isn't that pretty? Okay. Then what you do is at the bottom flap, if you can see here, right? I've already put adhesive on mine, but pretty much you fold down one flap, have a adhesive, glue that flap to the next one. Yep. Then what you do is you need to put adhesive on the next one, glue the next tab, and then glue the bottom one. So it's all glue. You can do you can be neater than me. Okay, so the two flaps fold in like that at the top, and you need to taper in this, taper in that. Then for the decorations, I've done my butterflies. So I punched out two butterflies and I um, layered them on top of each other using glue dots and then the dimensions I'm going to do one here I've got my two butterflies punched out okay so basically using Stampin' Up! stamps I punched it out with my punched okay so glue dots mini glue dots mini glue dots mini glue dots chuck one mini glue dot on here glue dot on there. Sorry, my phone is running out of power. Um, bop, bippity, boppity, boop. Okay, so let's continue. One mini glue dot on there. Small butterfly on top. Okay, now the dimensional strip. Three rows. Cut. Cut. Stick on. Boom, 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 boom. I don't want this video to be too long. Okay, now more dimensionals. Oh, sorry. Glue dots, mini glue dots. Put one here. One on here. Yep. And then just pop it onto your box. So just put one on top here. And the bottom one on the bottom here. Yeah. And close the lid. And that's it. That's your three-layered faceted box. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. Just um, if you would like to recreate this one, follow the instruction, find the blog. Please show me your blog. Show me your creations. Show me the ones that you've done. I would love to hear from you guys. Okay. I'd love to hear if you like this video. Just hit the like button, subscribe to me. I'll put out more videos. Okay. Thank you. Bye.